Today, we are going to do some much needed upgrades to my Turbo Vortec 4200 swapped 1981 Ford Fairmont station wagon. Now, the last time that you guys saw this car, we had just gotten done installing our newly fabricated intercooler and installing a fresh engine. And then we took the car to the Atlas Nationals, which took place at Kilcare Dragway in Ohio, and we ran the car. What we found was there was a few issues that needed to be corrected, and we're gonna start with the first one, and that is right here. If you guys saw the car racing, you may have noticed the big old charge pipe that is sticking down below the bumper. If you guys have followed this build for a while, you know that my goal with this car is to make it more of a sleeper build. You know, I, I generally don't like seeing stuff like that being visible on the car just because, you know, I, I want somebody to walk up to this thing and be like, oh, okay, it's just an old station wagon and then start finding clues that aren't so obvious. <laughs> so one thing that I want to do to address that, I bought this chin spoiler for a first gen S10 based on the recommendation from someone from uh, Six Summer. And I think that I might have bought the wrong one because now that I line the thing up to the car, we can see that, say I line it up with this edge of the car and I walk over to the other side. Um, yeah, it doesn't really line up very good. <laughs> That isn't a big deal because I'm actually thinking about using that to our advantage. Um, as you can see, we added these holes here in the bumper to try and get more airflow through the intercooler. But we may also um, cut the spoiler in half and add a little bit of uh, a, a opening in here to allow as much air to get through the intercooler. ruined this perfectly good chin spoiler it was just a matter of filling in the gap that I had made I trimmed the uh, the chin spoiler out here to allow more airflow through the intercooler and I fabricated this aluminum piece here which I painted black this doubles as a mount for the bottom and it also uh, is like a little tray to help direct air into the intercooler I basically set the thing up to screw into the spoiler here and uh, screw into my intercooler mount, and I think it turned out pretty decent. It's definitely not perfect, but from a distance, it looks pretty good, and that's good enough for me. The top mounts with a couple of bolts right to the existing bumper, and the side mounts to the fender with a uh, just one bolt here, and I think that came out pretty decent. Next, when we ran the car at the Atlas Nationals, I noticed that the air coming into the turbo was particularly hot. I have quite a few sensors on this car, and one of them is a temperature sensor in the inlet pipe, and we were noticing 175 degrees coming into the turbo. And I know exactly why this is happening. I got a little lazy with my charge pipe. Normally I route the uh, intake pipe into the fender well where it can draw in cool air. But I got lazy and uh, didn't feel like uh, fighting through that. So I just left the air intake underneath of the hood 
and it was drawing air from the radiator. Therefore, we needed to come up with a better solution, and frankly, it was time to go back to the drawing board on the whole system. First, I fabricated this box, which interfaces with the inner fender and holds the air filter. Now, if it is possible, it is always best to create some sort of ram air induction into the car. Basically, use the speed of the vehicle to build a little bit of pressure before the turbo. And rather than just stuffing the air filter into the fender well, I decided to go the extra mile and build a little bit of a scoop for the car to help get air into the turbo. So without further ado, let's get into a fabrication montage and show this thing off. If you guys watched the previous video, you saw that we just got done fabricating this gigantic intercooler here. And this is basically the most amount of intercooler that I could possibly fit in the front of this car without doing major modifications that I'm just not willing to do. The core dimensions on it are four and a half inch thick, 17 inch high, and 22 inch wide. So it is definitely a pretty sizable piece. Um, the thing weighs like 42 pounds by itself. And when we added that, we also uh, introduced a new issue to the car. And um, yeah, it, it, it overheats now. Basically, we've added this big old uh, chunk of aluminum here in front of the radiator. 
And now the radiator is not able to get adequate air in order to cool the car. Now, I've been running a uh, Summit Racing radiator on this car for a while. It just has their generic twin fan setup. Um, I don't know what brand the fans are, but they're not particularly powerful. And I just received this fan shroud from our friends over at Burn Down Garage. Big thanks to Dane Thompson. He designed this up, and what you are looking at here, this is a brushless... 2015 Chevy Silverado fan holder. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with these fans, they are a pretty beastly unit, and I have one right here. A lot of the modern vehicles these days are getting brushless style fans like this, and there's a good reason for it. These fans will move a lot more air. I believe they can run them at a higher RPM than you could with a traditional DC motor. And they will generally draw less amperage than your typical uh, standard electric motor style fan. So we are converting from a dual fan setup to a single one of these. And the reason that we are doing this is this is not the first time that we have run a brushless fan on one of our cars. We're actually running a Delta PAG fan on the 2010 Camaro build that we did. And we also ran one on my uh, 63 Studebaker, which was important for me. And I am a big fan of these fans. No pun intended. <laughs> what we have found is that it is way more important to have good airflow than it is to have a big core on your radiator. In fact, I reduced the size of the uh, radiator core on my uh, Studebaker, and because I put such a beefy fan on it, it actually cooled better than it did with the old setup. With the Delta PAG fan, I never saw the temperature get over 195, even on very hot days, uh, sitting in traffic. Um, it, it, was, it was pretty incredible. Now, what I hope to find is that these Silverado fans perform similarly. Um, I'm a big fan of the Delta PAG fans, but uh, this solution should be better in almost every way. One, the fans are significantly cheaper, and since I'm a drag-and-drive guy, it will be easier to carry a spare because, one, they're less expensive, and two, the part that uh, typically fails is probably going to be the motor, and you can actually unbolt the blades from it and reduce the size of um, what you're actually carrying. Space is a premium on a drag and drive car. Um, you can't bring the entire garage. You gotta pick and choose what you bring. So I definitely see that as an advantage. The only thing that is in question is, does this thing move as much air as the Delta PAG stuff? And we're gonna find out. challenging than uh, what I expected. I had to notch the uh, shroud quite a bit down here just to get around the crankshaft of my engine. And I also discovered that the placement that I had put the, uh, the fan on my shroud wasn't far enough that way. Um, so I had to uh, cut a sliver out of it and weld it back in. And uh, <laughs> Hopefully this will now fit in the car. 
It's alive! That thing moves some air. <laughs> and here is the minimum speed. Less than an amp. I think that's 15% duty cycle. Yep, 15. Nice. This isn't even max speed. Look at that temperature go down. I have to apologize guys, today has been kind of an ADHD type update. We've just been all over the place. But I have one more thing to share with you. We have found a larger injector solution that will fit in the factory location. I talked with Brad over at Snake Eater Performance and I talked about our needs for a larger injector. Previously we had tried Bosch 210s with the spacer on the bottom and that really didn't work well. Brad, being an expert in injectors, mentioned that he probably knows why the spacer on the bottom didn't work with 210s and that was because of the spray pattern. The spray pattern on a 210 is much more wide whereas the 1500 is more of a pencil shape. What I love about working with Brad is I can sort of pitch an idea to him and he'll go and test it for me and we can figure out how to make things work. He mocked up some 1500s on his flow bench with the spacer on the bottom to see how it would affect the spray pattern and he found that it really didn't have a tremendous effect. So we gave it a shot and we installed some 1500s into my wagon with the spacer on the bottom and I have great news for you guys. It worked. The car idles great. It has good throttle response. And I think we now have an injector solution for those that are looking for more horsepower than an 1100cc injector can provide. So that should be on the market pretty soon. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. Now I have probably close to 20 hours into this whole intake setup, and I really hope that it works as good as it looks like that it will. So let's take the thing out for a drive and see how it performs. very happy with the work that we did today. I think that the upgrades that we did will make horsepower production in the future a whole lot easier and it should make the whole combo more efficient. That being said, we still haven't hooked up the methanol to the car and I'm really excited to see how that affects the charge air temperature going into the intake manifold and as we've seen in the past, it also results in quite a bit of horsepower, so it should be exciting to uh, go down that path in the future. Hopefully the next time you see this car, it will be running at the track, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.